In this video, I'm gonna show you how to catch spotted bay bass. That's coming up right now. Let's go. Hey, it's Roman Castro. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here and you enjoy inshore bay fishing, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. In last week's video, I caught 100 spotted bay bass in one session. This video is a breakdown of the techniques, the approach, the baits, and everything I found helpful in accomplishing that challenge. I'm gonna break this video down into five parts. The five parts are tackle, cast and retrieve technique, fish, search pattern, bite detection and hook set advice, and lure tips. But before we get into that, I'm gonna give you a disclaimer. I'm not a guide or a professional angler. I'm just sharing what I know and what worked for me. I realize there's more than one way to catch a spotty. This is just how I did it. I'm not sponsored or paid or compensated in any way for any of the gear I use to make my videos. I pay regular price for the gear I use so I'm not beholden to a brand or a sponsor. This is the best way for me to have the freedom to fish whatever gear and lures work for me. All right, let's go over the basic tackle. So the rod I use is a Shimano Convergence graphite rod, six feet by six feet and six inches. So I rated for eight to 15 pound line and a lure weight of three sixteenths to three quarter. It's a medium heavy power rod with a fast action tip. The rod cost me about, I think like 60 bucks. It's a cheap rod. I don't think that it's in production anymore, but you can find the equivalent of this rod with those uh, with those specs. The reel is a Shimano Solstice 2500 Fi. It's a cheap reel. It cost me like 30 bucks at the time, and I think you get it now on eBay or on uh, Amazon for like 26 bucks. It comes like in a little plastic container, and I've had this reel for like almost four years now, five years, and I've never serviced it, and it still works awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really affordable combo. So this whole combo probably costs like under hundred dollars, maybe 120 bucks. Um, and I have two of these setups. This one, my main one, I have a setup with 10 pound. And then from there I go to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, just so it makes it harder for the fish to see. And that 10 pound fluorocarbon leader goes to the tackle that I'm using for the, for, that I use for most of this video, which is a Z-Man Ned rig. So let me show you that up close. Here is a Z-Man Ned rig without the lure on there. As you can see, it has a little, a little keeper here. This one's bent because I use it so much. This is the one I actually used in the video. It's thin wire. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. This is a Z-Man uh, TRD bait. It's, it's, this is a mud minnow color. It's super stretchy, which is good, but there's a little bit of a drawback on that, and I'll tell you guys more about that in the last part, which is lure tips. For now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it up like I would if I was gonna fish it right now. Okay, so, so it's super basic. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna do the TRD on here because I'm gonna show you, a di I'm gonna show you the, the uh, hula stick first. So the two things I'm using is the TRD, that's uh, like a little slug, Z-Man TRD slug in the mud minnow color, and also the uh, Z-Man hula stick. It's basically, it's basically a little slug, but it's got four little te tentacles hanging out the top to give it more action. And I think it's a little bit longer. Yeah, it's a little bit longer, right? So this is the color I like to use at night, but in the daytime, I'll use this same color. So it's the same hula stick, but in the mud minnow pattern, which is this color, okay? Um, when I set this guy up on the hook, I like to cut off about a quarter inch to half an inch. So I take this and I cut about, so that much, cut off about that much like a quarter inch and that makes it about almost the same size as a uh, regular TRD plus a little bit extra with the tentacles. So you basically take the lure and you hold it against the bait to see where it's, about where it would pop out. So about there and then you run the bait through right down the middle. Push it up until you get to where about you want it to pop out. And then you turn it, pop it out. And make sure this part goes all the way to get snagged up on the little keeper. So you push it up. Okay. And then when you pull on it, the little keeper will keep it in place. See that? So that's a basic setup on these little uh, baits. And then when they when they sit on the bottom, they'll do that, but a little bit slower because they stick right up. So that's really enticing for the fish, I think, All right? 
so these are the setups I used in that 100 fish video. Um, again, a hula stick in, in the mud minnow color and a TRD in the mud minnow color. Okay, it's a finesse TRD. Okay, that's the actual package. And the mud minnow color. And you get, what is it, eight in a pack. They're about seven bucks, eight bucks. But that's the other thing, these baits will last a long time. As far as a reel goes for this kind of fishing, it's kind of finesse fishing, it's kind of smaller baits, lighter line. I would stick with somewhere in the 2500 series range. So I, I find the 2500 series, the 2500 size spinning reel is perfect for what I'm doing for this application. So if you're trying to set up this exact setup, I would go with the 2500 reel. That's the actual setup, that's the rod, that's the reel, that's the line. Now let's move on to how I actually fish them, okay? Now we're gonna talk about cast and retrieve techniques for fishing these spotted bass. Something I didn't know when I first started fishing was that when you make a, when you make a cast, you want to close your bail or engage your reel as soon as your bait hits the water. Because what I used to do in the past was I would cast, let the bait hit the water, and I would let it free spool until it hit the bottom. Uh, what that would do is it would make, I would miss bites. Sometimes a lot of these fish will hit on the way down on an initial cast. So what you wanna to do to, to avoid missing that bite, as soon as your bait hits the water, you close your bail or you engage your reel, and then you kind of, uh, instead of the bait having a straight drop with a, like if it was free spooling, then once it becomes engaged, it's gonna fall kind of at an angle, right? And that's fine, because you'll be able to fill a bite if you get a bite. So that's be the, that would be the first thing to, to check on your technique as far as like casting. When your bait hits the bottom, the line, which would have looked straight, kind of like from the, rod, from, from the tip of your fishing rod to the surface of the water, will look like it has a bend in it. It'll look bowed as opposed to straight. So that's when you know you're on the bottom, and you wanna kind of uh, start retrieving it in one of two ways. And here we're gonna call this the retrieve phase. And I like to use two different retrieves. And I'll start with my favorite one, which is basically I just keep my rod uh, level with the, with the surface of the water or slightly up, like at a 20 degree angle. And I don't use the rod that much for the retrieve, I just use the reel. So I will give the reel a half turn. And what happens underwater is it takes up some line it pulls the, the bait off the bottom and starts bringing it up towards the boat, a half turn, right? And then let it go and it drops back to the bottom. You can feel, you'll be able to start to feel when it hits the bottom again. So it goes bloop, plop. So it's kind of like a little bit of a small, like a small jig, but it's not a jerk. It's a reel. So you kind of, you're, you're half, you do a half crank and you bring it up and let it drop again, right? So I do that and let it sit there for like about two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, just try different, try different uh, times to see what starts to work for you. And then I'll do another half crank. And basically just, that causes the bait to go like boop and just sit there, right? Uh, and since these little baits can, will stick up in the water, it's kind of, it's an easy target for the fish to hit. So I'll do that. And then if that's not working, I'll try uh, a whole turn. I'll try two turns of the, of the actual reel and uh, see how that'll cover, that'll cover more, that'll cover more distance faster. But if I want to slow it, slow fish it, slow fish it, then I'll do a half turn and just kind of like really cover that area, let the fish really take a lot of swipes at it, right? You'll feel the difference between you, your little lure hitting the bottom and fish nipping at it. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in the hook set portion of this video. The second retrieve I like to use is one that uses the actual rod and the reel combined. Um, this is um, I like to use this one when it's when there's more grass and and stuff's getting more snagged up because it because it allows me to use a rod to pull it up as opposed to just uh, the, the reel to pull it at that same angle, okay? So when I feel that there's a lot of grass on the bottom and, it's, and I'm, I've been snagged or I'm getting snagged a lot, a lot I will do the initial uh, action on the lure by lifting my rod tip, kind of pulling it up, and then letting it drop, and as it's dropping, I'm taking up the slack with the reel, okay? So I do that as opposed to just slow winding it and letting it drag where it is. This angle seems to be, seems to help a little bit towards, because I think the, the bait is going from getting dragged to being popped up, right? That's the way I envision it. I'm not sure if that's what's actually happening under the water, but that's what seems to be working for me, especially for, the, for you guys that asked about how I don't get snagged with a, with a bear hook like that. Cool, so those are the two techniques I like to use. Another thing that's important to note is, uh, depending on how deep it is, I don't work the last, and by, and by work, I mean I don't, put action into a lure for the last 
quarter or one third of the cast. So I'll cast out, I'll do the half turn or the one turn wait, one turn wait, or the half turn wait, or the, or the two turns wait. Uh, I do that for uh, the first two thirds to three quarters of the cast because the last quarter or the last uh, third, depending on how deep it is, uh, is basically the lure coming up to the boat, right? So you're kind of you're not on the on the bottom anymore. So sometimes the fish will get it as it starts to come up off the floor because uh, they've been following it. But for the most part, I don't get hit on the way up from the bottom to back to the boat to get ready to cast. So once I get to that point where it's like the lure is close to me or almost under the boat, I just bring the lure right up and do, and set up for my next cast. That way, it saves a little bit of time. And if you're saving yourself a little bit of time on each cast, it adds up throughout the day. So that's just another tip. Try those out. Let me know how, how they work out for you. And again, these are all just like frameworks for you to experiment with, right? So try those things, adjust how long you let it sit there, how many cranks you give it, how high you lift up the rod tip. Normally on the second type of, of uh, retrieve, I go from like 20 to, I go from zero to 20 degrees uh, to begin with. And I take it up to like, I don't know, like 45 to 80 degrees. And uh, just depending on how much I want the bait to move, right? If I, want to, if I want the bait to move a little bit, just to go like this, bloop, then I would just do like maybe like a little, like a little jump and then reel it back in. If I want the bait to just like, if I'm, if I'm in grass and I feel like I'm gonna get snaggy and I want to give it like a big jump and I'll put the rod tip all the way to like maybe 80 and then it pops off the whole section and it goes off to the, it's kind of like you have to use your lure to detect where the grass is and stuff. It's kind of like reading braille, okay? So that's the, those are the two techniques that I, that I would start, start you off with and adjust as needed, okay? So remember, in the grass, you're gonna pull it up and take up the slack. When it's not so snaggy and it's mostly on, on, on sand, little rocks and stuff, then I would go with the first technique, which is just to keep, it, keep the rod at like 20 degrees or level and just use the, use the reel to, to um, bring, it, bring in the, the lure. And if you give it that good 20 degrees, it'll be easier for you to detect the little bounces that you get from like hitting rocks or going from rocks to like to grass or, or like poking it through grass. It's, it's, uh, you're kind of also working on, your, on the feel for the bite, right? All right, so now you have all that good information. You have the lures, you have the tackle, you have the cast and retrieve techniques, and then now you need to just figure out where these fish are, right? So when you start fishing, uh, you, you have no idea what the fish are doing that day. It's always a new challenge, it's always a new pattern, it's always a new puzzle, right? Whenever I go fishing, I like to think about it that way. I think of it as a, as a puzzle, right? And so, I, so over like the past couple of years, I've, I've, I've started to like figure out how to try to make, make this easier for me each time I go out, so I, I go of course, based on previous experiences, but also I like to fish a, a certain way to figure out what the fish are doing that day. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you my fish search pattern. That's the, way, that's the technique I use to figure out how the fish wanna bite that day, okay? So let's, let's jump into that now. For that piece, I have a diagram up here, because I think it would be easier to explain it that way and easier for you to visualize what, what I'm doing and why I'm doing these certain things. Let's make sure we're all on the same page by uh, just agreeing on some definitions. If your definitions of these words are different, that's okay. We're just using my definitions in this video so that you can understand the techniques that I'm trying to communicate to you, okay? So let's get on this diagram and I'll show you what I mean. So here we go. This is the fish search pattern I use when I'm out there fishing and it's a new spot or a, a spot I've been before just to figure out where the fish are. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the first term I like to use is a zone, okay? Uh, when it, when the way I'm using the word zone is a group of fishing spots, okay? So for example, if you are fishing in a zone and uh, you're done fishing that area and you want to go fish a different area, that would classify as going to a different zone, okay? So it's anywhere where you're, where you're fishing that is not connected to the next fishing spot or fishing zone, okay? So that's, that's the way I'm, I'm classifying a zone. And the way I organize my fishing outings is I look on Google Maps or, I, or, I've, or where I've fished before and I say, okay, I want to hit up these zones, these four or five zones, and then I figure out the the uh, the path I'm going to take to those zones, right? So now I'm going to break down what I do in a zone to figure out if there's fish there and how they're biting. Zone from to me, it's composed of fishing spots, and I'm going to show you how I come how I, how I come up with the definition of a spot uh, based on this diagram. So let, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Okay, this is the basic topography. This is a, the shore. Okay, and this is 
maybe like a, a feature in the shoreline, like a pipe. And this is uh, like the top of level of the uh, of the bottom structure, right? So you have like a flat area in three feet, a little bit of a deeper flat area in six feet, probably caused from the water coming out of this drainage pipe, causing a little like a uh, little funnel effect here, and then it drops off to like 10 feet, right? Uh, this is a, a buoy floating out there. This is a boat dock, a little boat dock with a boat attached to it. And that's all in like 10 feet of water. We're just, uh, these are all made up spots. This is not a real spot. <laughs> I just made it up and for explanation purposes only, okay? So this is me on my kayak and I am, this is, this is what I would consider spot one, okay? So we're gonna call this S1 right here. Spot one. And this spot is determined by how far I can cast from the kayak, okay? So I can cast, we'll see I can cast uh, that far away from the kayak, okay? So that's one, two, okay? And then from there, let's just say I can cast the same distance all the way around the kayak. Okay? So that's that, that would be my fishing spot one. That would be spot one in zone one, okay? These are my zones. Uh, here, let's just say there's a bridge and I'd be going to traverse to a different area, so that'd be zone two or three, depending on which way you go. This way, let's just say after this boat dock, there's, it's featureless, there's nothing there that we, that we could want to explore. So uh, that would be a different zone, right? We just traverse to the next zone at that point. Okay, so we're gonna break down zone one now. So we're in zone one and I know from personal experience that these bodies like to group up. So if you find a spotty, you are very likely to find a ton more in that area. So uh, what I do when I get on the kayak is I first I need to figure out if the fish are in shallow today or deep, right? So what's the best way to find out? Well, you gotta cast, right? You gotta cast. I take about 10 to 15 casts on one spot and if, if, I, if I don't get bit in those 10 to 15 casts, then I move on to another spot, right? So here, let's just say I'm gonna check deep first. So I'm gonna cast this way, okay? Say I landed there and do my retrieve, either retrieve one or two, uh, and I don't get any bites, okay? That's fine. So I'm gonna try, um, I'm gonna try, instead of working the deep, I'm gonna try the deep a little bit more. I'm gonna try another cast at a slight angle. Try there, and then I'm and then if I don't get anything, if I don't get a bite there either, then I'm gonna try another cast at a, a different angle here, right? And see if I get any bites there. If I don't get any bites there, then it's a, I'm, I'm almost sure there's no fish in that deeper area in the ten feet air, ten foot area, right? So then I can I'm gonna try in the shallow. That pipe is also an interesting feature that I think would have some kind of, it would create some kind of a, uh, uh, what's it called, um, drop in in the contour of the bottom where the fish could actually hide or whatever. And then also from the kayak, I have my polarized glasses on, I can see where it's brown and then where it turns kind of darker. And that's like, cause there's eelgrass there, right? So I can see from my kayak that there's eelgrass right here, there's eelgrass right there. And also I can see right here, where, where, where it goes from shallow, from three feet to 10 feet, that drop is pretty significant. And that's a good spot for like a halibut or a spotty to chill and ambush anything swimming out of those area to, uh, to get out to the deeper side, right? So uh, I can see this transition without a, a depth finder because I, I know that the color goes from like, goes from brown and, and dark, like black or green to like, a little deeper blue or deeper green, depending on the color of the water that day, right? So that's why I know there's a drop off there. And and you'll get used to seeing this stuff. It's 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 actually easier to see it with polarized glasses. You don't need polarized glasses, but if it gets a little windy, uh, polarized glasses, like uh, they're a world of difference because you'll be able to see all these variations from, from your kayak. If you stand up, it's even easier to see, but most of us uh, sit down while we fish. So, but still you, you can see it with polar, Anyway, polarized glasses will help a lot in this, in this phase, okay? So we, we, uh, 
we didn't get anything on the deep side, so we're going to cast on the shallow side, okay? So we're going to cast towards that feature because it's an interesting thing, right? So we cast that way, and we say so we don't get a bite on that one, okay? And then we cast this way, and we get a bite, okay? So we'll say there's a, there's a, a splotty right there, okay? Okay, I'm going to use a different color for the cast where we get fish, okay? So we catch a, we catch a splotty, we release it, and we cast again the same exact cast. Okay. And we don't get a spotty. Okay. That's okay because I'm going to make it the rule that you at least cast two more times on the exact same spot uh, before you continue your pattern. Okay. So we cast again in the same exact spot and we don't get anything. We're going to continue our pattern because we're just uh, one fish in. This spot one is good. We know that there's fish on there. So now we have to figure out if there's any if there's any fish over here or over here. We think there's no fish on the deep side where there's been a fish in the shallow side. So we're gonna focus our efforts on the shallow side and try to figure out if they're in the eelgrass, if they're on the drop off, if they're in the three foot section, in the six foot section, or in the or in the transition from six to ten, right? So in here. So we're gonna continue our search. We're gonna cast out here, and we're gonna cast out here, right? And then say that that cast yields another fish, right? This one. Okay. So that's good. We're gonna hit that fish, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna cast that exact same cast again. At least two times after you've caught a fish in that same exact spot, because what happens a lot of the time, and I'm a diver, I've seen this underwater. Um, they won't. There won't be any fish anywhere else except for. Like, I'm gonna put X's for spotties, okay? So, right there, right there, right there, right there. Let's just say that they're right there and they each have a little section of the of the eelgrass and they like to protect the little, the little zone. I mean, I've, I know you've seen spotties at like uh, Fed Hall Show when they have that tank. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you think back, the, the calico suspend on the kelp and the spotted bay bass and the and the sand bass, they're always on the bottom, like on the on the on the sand resting, right? Or in this case, in the eelgrass. Okay. So, what you want to do is you want to hammer that area, like I said, and make sure that, that you're getting those fish. So here, let's say we we keep casting there for the, an, an extra two after we catch that one, and we catch we catch another one right here, right? So we catch that one, and we catch we catch that one. There's one. There's two. There's three. In that little section. And there's still some back here that haven't seen our lure and they don't know what's going on right now. So what we need to do is just finish our pattern here and be done. So we, we, ca we, catch, we catch the last one, we catch the third one here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a tally for spotties, okay? So we, we're like one, two, we're three spotties in and there's four other ones in, the, in that same little eelgrass patch, right? So we, we, we catch those and then we continue our search pattern before we move from spot one and go here and there's no fish there. Go here, there's no fish there. Go here, there's no fish there. Go here, there's no fish there. Okay, so we've done enough. This is spot one. We're gonna circle spot one with the blue. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so that's spot one. And now we're going to move to spot two, okay? Since it seemed like most of the fish were coming from that side. And again, don't get me wrong, there's probably fish out here too that we don't know about because they're not within our spot one range, our casting range. But we've got to go somewhere, right? So it's, right now it's more likely for us, it's, it's better for us to go uh, this way to see if there's any more fish on that side, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to move to spot two, okay? Let me move this 10 foot marker here. We want spot two to overlap a little bit with spot one. We're going to move the kayak as far as we can cast, okay? So right on the edge of spot one. Once I move to spot two, I like to start with the same angle cast of the last fish I caught, okay? So look at the angle of these fish, right? So my first cast for my new spot is going to be uh, the same angle as those ones, okay? So I'm going to try to cast like this. 
I do my cast and, and, I, and, I, and I don't get any bites, okay? Um, the reason I'm casting shallow is because the, the fish seem to be on the shallow side, okay? I'm not gonna focus on the, on the deep side because I, I haven't caught any fish on the deep side. And yeah, granted, some of you can say that I'm more likely to catch it on the shallow side because I'm casting more towards the shallow. Um, it's just trial and error, okay? So I cast there in the same direction as that and I don't get a fish, okay? So then I, I, then I go back to my regular pattern, which is I'll fish, I'll cast towards shore, like straight up, and then boom, that guy takes it. Now I'm bit, okay? So that's another fish. And I, since I got bit there and I caught a fish, I will cast there again two more times at least, okay? So I cast again, and then nothing happens. Let's just say I put a little bit of extra oomph on the, on the next cast and I get it close enough for that guy to get interested in it and he comes and sees it on the drop and just attacks it, okay? So that's another fish on that same spot. That resets my, my, my counter. So now since I, got, since, I got, since I caught another fish, I have to cast in the same spot another two times, okay? That's just my rule of thumb. I find that it works for me. I just, that way I don't miss any fish, right? So I cast the same spot. Again, two more times. And again, it doesn't have to be the exact same spot. You could be off by a little bit, but just in the same general zone, right? There's another cast, another cast, and I don't get any fish there, okay? That's it. It was just those two. It was just that one. Was it one, two, three, four, five, so that's two. So five, oops. Five, okay? All right, so that's, that's uh, more fish. So then there's no more fish after the last Two casts after the, after so after I caught after I caught the fifth fish, I cast it two more times and didn't catch anything else. So now we got to continue our search pattern. Okay, we got to we got to cast that way. Got to cast that way to where I was, like basically fishing under where I was, and then uh, make sure you cover all these zones here, right? Remember, you got to do at least uh, was it ten to fifteen casts per spot. And then just for because because I can see the the ground because I can see the shoreline turn here, then I know there's a drop here. I can see the eelgrass there. I want to cast towards the eelgrass, and I want to fish this this like gradual drop off, right? And then because I've uh, I focus so much on the shallow side, and this is kind of shallow too now because it's it's part of the drop off. The deep is over here, right? So I want to cast here too. And then I'll cast a cup one time or maybe two times towards the deep, just to make sure I, I kind of uh, fish that whole zone. Okay, so that's that's spot two. Okay, so spot two and spot one overlap, and all this middle part overlaps, and that way you don't miss any any fish in that in that area. Okay, okay. So now we're gonna so now we're so close to the edge. Right, and there's fish we might have missed over here, like really close to the to shore. I have the choice of either uh, going from from spot two and making spot three like up here. Right, I can make spot three like right here. Make that spot three, and now I'm casting almost all the way to shore. Right, but I do my pattern again. Um, when I caught a fish on this one. I cast it straight up and I caught a fish. So I'm still gonna do the same pattern. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast, I'm gonna cover my range. I'm gonna do at least 10 to 12, 10 to 15 casts in that spot. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say on the sixth cast here, all right, there's that one spot that we missed earlier. And it's kind of close to the boat, but there's another spotty, okay? So let's, let's put another tick mark down here. And then, uh, let's see, since we got a spotty there, that means we have to cast at least two more times in that same exact spot, just for the sake of not missing any fish. And then we kind of go up past it, your normal cast, and then boom, this is the other one sees it passing by here, and he bites it, so that's another, another fish, right? Right there. So we'll add another fish here. And that is basic. That is the basic pattern I like to do. If uh, 
and I kind of this is this is a way for me to follow which way the fish uh, are going. This is kind of a way for me to break down and see, kind of zero in on the fish, right? And it's it's tedious, but it it, it works. Okay, let's now let's pretend that we didn't get any fish at all here. Okay, and on here or here. Okay, so we caught these couple of fish here. We moved over here and to to spot number two, and spot number two didn't get us any fish. Okay, so instead of going instead of doing spot number three up here, I would have done spot number three back here, because there's a lot of interesting stuff back here. There's a buoy, and there's the other side of this little V drop off, and there's eelgrass. I can see it from the surface. Okay, or I can see the color change between brown and green, brown and like dark, either dark brown or dark green, whatever the watercolor is, okay? So let's just do alternative spot three, okay? Because spot two didn't yield anything, so we're gonna move over to, to spot three. And then spot three is gonna be, again, right where, outside of my cast range, right where my cast range is from the previous spot. This is the new spot three. So different scenario, this is if we didn't get any bites on, on spot two. We figured there's no fish going that way, so we move back to spot one because spot one has some fish, but we want to continue to pursue that, that, that line to see where the fish are, okay? So again, move to spot three, and from spot three, there's an obstacle here, right? But we still cast around it. So we, we do our, I'm gonna cast shallow because I know that it seems like the fish are more in the shallow. So I cast up here, and let's see, let's say that guy sees it, and he just eats it, so that's one fish, right? And then, um, we can't cast, so that means we have to cast at least two more times there, right? That's the rule. So, and again, these are just suggestions. So that's my, but my rule is, if I catch a fish in one spot, I'm gonna cast at least two more times in the same spot. So I catch, cast two more times. One, two, there's nothing else there. There was just that one fish there. Um, okay, so now I gotta continue my search. Uh, I'm gonna cast this way, right? Don't, that guy didn't see it, so I, so I just completely missed him. Uh, I can't cast this way because I'd be casting over the buoy. I don't want to get stuck on the rope or the chain that's holding it in place. So I'm not going to cast that way. I'm just going to cast close to it as possible, right? Then I'm going to cast straight forward. Then I'm going to cast in between those two. Just really try to explore the whole area, right? And I know this way is kind of deep, so I'm just going to do like a Hail Mary cast and just kind of go into the deep. Every once in a while you catch like something different, like a halibut or like a lizard fish, something different. But there, that's, that's my zone. Uh, that is my zone three. My new zone three, here, right? And so as you can see, like, as you work, it's not, not, not done, I'm sorry, that's my new spot three. And as you can see, as you, as you fish those spots and like really explore those spots, you end up covering the whole zone, right? Um, if you wanna, if you see like right here, you see it kind of drop off into the deep and there might not be anything here, right? But there might be some underwater structure that you don't see from the surface. There's no way of knowing it's there unless you have a sonar. And I don't fish with a sonar for now. For spot number four. Uh, because I, there's, a, there's some good uh, structure there, right? So I like this spot because there's a drop off. I like this spot because there's a structure here. There's a piling holding up this dock. There's a boat there, right? There's not really structure under the boat, but it has some good shade. And fish like to be under the shade. Um, and then, uh, so I would fish from here, and I would cast along the dock, right? And just kind of just do my coverage that way too, right? And see what, see what gets you bit, and that's your zone four, right? So, sorry, that's your spot four. Spot four is that. And there's a little bit, there's not, there's not that much overlap here. And that's okay because this zone is probably like not so, there's not, probably not so much going on there, because all the drop off happened over here. This is kind of like a flat, and after you get to a certain depth, uh, maybe not 10 feet, but like 15 feet, 20 feet. Sometimes there's not enough light for the eelgrass to grow, so you're kind of like in a dead zone. The only thing down there is like maybe like stingrays or something. Okay, so and again, that's just me talking from my experience. I'm, I used to dive this uh, Mission Bay and like uh, looking for halibut, so I know like what's down there, like when, when it becomes, like you can see like a definite line between where the eelgrass grows and where it just becomes nothing but sand and like, and like, uh, like a muddy bottom that's like hard to, like it just, it just silts up as soon as you touch it. So 
I don't think fish like to be on that. Okay, so that's that's uh, that's just me. That's just my experience. Okay, so that would be the breakdown of the the how I break down a zone. Okay, this is how I, and how I would catch spies in those different areas. Okay, so with that said, the things you have to remember in addition to all of that is trying to trying to keep in your head what actually worked. What retriever you were using, um, what lure you were using, um, how fast you were retrieving it, all that stuff. Try to remember when you actually get a bite. Try to remember what you were doing. And then what you could also do is we already explored zone two. Okay. Most of our fish were in the three foot to six foot range in eelgrass, right? And uh, around like a little drop-offs a little bit, right? So now what you do is you take this information that you just figured out um, and you, when you go to your next zone, right? So you go to your zone two and wherever, that your, wherever your fishing plan uh, says you want to go and you start by fishing um, areas that have a similar topography or similar depth, right? And you start with the same angles that seem to be working because I didn't ex add this to, to this diet. There's also something I didn't cover in this. Uh, we'll maybe do it in a different video. But, there's, but current has a lot to do with how, what angle and uh, whether or not the fish get a chance to see your lure and take it. Okay. Um, I just, this is, this is a kind of enough information for you guys to process. In a different video, I'll talk a little bit more about the angle of the eelgrass based on current, how that relates to a fish. Where a fish is facing, for example, if a fish is facing, if the current's coming this way, the fish will be facing up current, and the eelgrass will be laying down this way. Okay, if you cast that way and retrieve your lure coming this way, then you're less likely to get snagged because the eelgrass has already bent over, bent over going this way, and your lure kind of gets gets less snaggy through it, right? Whereas if the if the current was if you cast that way, and the eelgrass is all laying over this way then you have nothing but cross connects and you're crossing all of the eelgrass is tilted over and you're going to come across the fish's face, but you're more likely to get snagged, right? So current has a big role in this and don't think by any stretch of the imagination that this is everything that has to do with fishing. This is just uh, some pointers for you. These are just some pointers for you to get started and, and to start exploring. I'll make a different video on how I fish the current and how I think it affects the actual process. But for now, this is good enough just for search patterns and figuring out where the fish are and establishing a pattern that you can use in all the rest of those zones you're going to fish for that day okay uh, if you fishing a zone that's completely different than your zone here so for example say this say zone one and two and three are all shoreline with eelgrass and uh, little to no structure uh, and then your zone four for the day becomes like a like a dock or like just something different where it's like deeper uh, then you pretty much have to start from scratch. You, you'll have to start your whole search pattern from scratch. You just find a spot where you think it's going to be the fish. It's going to be fishy, and you start from spot one, and you do your pattern, and you figure out where the fish are biting, what depths, and all that good stuff. And then you start adjusting from there. And then you'll have the the pattern for the deeper sections of that bay. Okay. So that's that's what we have for for fishing zones and fishing spots, and, and how I've. How, the pattern I use to find. Now we're going to talk about bite detection and hook set advice. So for bite detection, it's pretty basic. If you feel a fish tugging on your line, your initial instinct is going to be to set the hook, right? Uh, since we're fishing light line and this is a thin wire gauge hook, you don't want to set the hook. You want to basically start reeling and the fish will kind of load up the, the fishing rod and then you will be hooked. Okay, you'll be on. Uh, most of the time when you fish this technique, the fish end up hooking themselves anyway. And by the time you feel the tap tap, it's because they're already hooked and you just got to basically reel it up. So don't set the hook because if you set the hook at that point, you'll rip the lip off that fish or, or bend out the hook or snap the line. Um, again, you want to make sure you don't snap the line by setting your drag to less than what your fishing line is rated for. So for example, my fishing line is rated for 10 pounds. I set my drag to about eight or seven pounds. Uh, it seems like super low, but it is a way for me to guarantee that I don't snap the hook when I, sorry, that I don't snap the line when I accidentally hook set. So used to setting the hook because I normally fish like power setup or I have like 
65 pound braid going to like 15 pound fluorocarbon and like the drag set to his max and when a feel a bite I just kind of yank on that thing and set the hook super hard so yeah that's like a completely different fishing technique this is finesse so you got to make sure you don't snap your line by send the hook you got to reel into it let the fish hook itself and you'll get you'll have more success that way and you'll lose less lures <laughs> and you'll catch more fish okay as far as filling the bite um it's it's uh it's, you have to learn you have to learn what it feels like it's hard to explain what it feels like but you have to be able to Sometimes the fish will just kind of pick it up and you'll just lose ground contact and it's because it's in the fish's mouth for like a split second and you kind of have to reel into it and get that, hook, get that fish hooked. Sometimes the fish will just pick it up and slam it and just take off with it and you'll definitely feel that bite. Um, but the best way to, to train yourself to feel the difference between the bite and the bottom is to make sure you keep your lure on the bottom and you can feel all the little nicks and, and bumps and scrapes from being on the bottom, uh, that's gonna help you detect when it's something different, right? You're gonna feel like your lure is not touching the bottom anymore, it's because the fish it has in his mouth, or you're gonna feel um, a different type of tap than you're used to compared to when it taps against a rock or when it taps uh, against eelgrass, right? So again, that's kind of kind of come from experience. Um, okay, so that's uh, let's move on to the, the final section of this video, which is the lure tip. But this kind of lure, uh, I found that the, it's the only drawback uh, that, I, that I found on this setup is that when you catch about, I don't know, like 7, 10, 15, 20 fish on one setup, what tends to happen is the way the fish hit the lure, um, they end up stretching it and the bend of the hook ends up ripping part of the bait. Let me show you what it looks like. So this is the actual Ned rig. This is a one-fifth of an ounce head. And here is the hula stick on there. As you can see, the bait comes out of here, we'll call this the bait's back. And when the fish picks this up, when the fish picks this up, it comes up and uh, either pulls it up like it thinks it's like a, it thinks it's like a little razor clam in the dirt. And, it, and when they first come up, they try to grab it and pull it up because they, because they want to pull it out of the ground, right? And again, guys, this is just me imagining what the fish are doing. Like, yeah, it kind of looks like a razor clam sticking out of the water. So why not? Why wouldn't the fish think it's a razor clam and just kind of try to rip it out of the sand like they're used to? Okay, this is just my thinking. Okay, so it pulls it up, and sometimes, so it pulls it up, and sometimes when it does that, pulling it against my fishing rod, you see that tension that happens right there? See that? That eventually causes a tear in the bait that comes down here. First, start fishing this bait, and the bait is new. The the hook comes out of this part right there. And since that's holding it in place, when you pull, the stretch starts like right here, right? As you fish it throughout the day, and you catch anywhere from like, I'd say like 10 to like 20 fish, this shank or this bend of the hook will start to rip into the bait and you'll develop this type of tear. See that? It goes from here to here and now you have the hook coming out like that. Some, you can still fish it like that, it'll still, get, it'll still fish, it'll still get bit. But what ends up happening is, as a, is the, the, be, the stretch of the bait is no longer being held in place by that little uh, bend of the hook. So now when you pull on it, the stretch happens down here as opposed to up here. Watch. See? And so now the fish has a lot more uh, stuff to hold on to before it gets to the hook. Okay? So when that starts to happen, uh, you'll find that you'll get a solid bite like it'll bend the rod and, and you'll you think you're starting to fight and then all of a sudden it just comes off what you do to fix that is you take the you take where the hook is coming out of and you basically put it back on itself right where it should have come out on the opposite side okay and you're basically now the hook is coming out of the belly of the bait as opposed to the back but now watch where it stretches I pull on the bait and see how the stretch again starts at the bend of the hook. Okay? And eventually it'll happen again where this where this will tear again and the bend of the hook will tear into the bait about that far. And when that happens again, you basically put the hook back in and you do it from like the like a, the side, right? There you go. And now it's coming out of the side of the bait as opposed to the top 
or the belly. And that gives you another shot at having the stretch begin right where the hook is, right? And again, it's gonna keep stretching, keep stretching, and it's gonna tear into it down here. And then again, you pull it out, and you do the opposite side. And basically what I like to do is I like to do, um, I'll do eight sides on this guy, as, far as, as long as I can find a spot around here that is not torn yet, right? Like that's torn. So I'll do like uh, eighth, thir eighth turns. If you're new to this, try, just try doing like quarter turns. So first, go opposite. So you start from you start on the back of the bait, and then pull it back over and go back into that same hole where, where it's stretched out. And you may come out the belly of the bait. Okay, twist it there. You fish it for a while, and then when you start missing bites again because it's ripped, or just check it, uh, pull it back out, and do the side of it, and then do the other side of it. And then when you're done with that whole side, you can just pull the bait. Off the off the net rig, all together, and then go to the other side and just fish it from the other side and do another four uh, positions. Okay, this is a super durable bait. Um, I think the only reason it tears like that is because this is an extra fine uh, wire hook. There's another there's another hook that um, there's another net rig that Z-Man does. This is also a Z-Man net rig. There's another one called the Power Finesse uh, net rig. And the, and the hook is a slightly thicker and a little bit taller. And I think that one's less likely to tear your baits like that. But this is just uh, something that I found when I was trying to catch the 25 spotted bay bass before I did the 100 spotted bay bass. I missed like, like, it's like seven to eight bites in a row, like solid bites that bent the rod, I was fighting it and then just came off, right? And then uh, after looking at it, I realized that's what it was. Uh, the little sh little uh, bait keeper keeps the head of the bait on the net rig, but the stretch again starts at the starts so close to the base of the net rig that the fish has too much slack to play with. All right. So same thing happens with the finesse TRDs and the hula sticks, uh, but it's same thing. Just like hook on the belly, hook it out the top, hook it out the side, hook it out the side. And then when that's all tore up, flip it over, and again, start from the back, the belly, the side, the side. And I find that I could get like about, I don't know, like anywhere from 10 to 20 fish before it gets uh, tore up that I have to move it. And then, so if you think about it, like that's 10 to 20 fish uh, four times on each end. And then 10 to 20 fish four times on this end. So you could definitely do 100 fish on one lure if you don't lose it, right? Uh, for the 100 spotties video, I did... I lost two Ned rigs, and so two of these setups, and I completed the challenge with this third one. So this is the actual one that I fished to complete the challenge. One I got, one I got anxious and I and I set the hook too hard before I had adjusted my drag, and I lost that one. Uh, the second one I I pinned it to a to a bat ray and it just didn't want to come up. <laughs> it was like it was impossible. And the third one was well, I, I kept. I made it all the way the rest of the night with the third one, but yeah. I don't think it was, I, I, if I would have, uh, I think my record on one of these is like around 60 fish. So I had, I had gone through one end. I was maybe like eight positions in because I turned it a quarter of a turn each time. And then I was getting ready to flip it over and I lost it on that next cast. So these things last a long time. As I said earlier, this video is not sponsored and uh, I buy all my gear myself with my own money. And uh, I do make a little bit of money on this channel and it's through uh, from people that enjoy my content and think that I'm bringing value to them and they want to return some of that value to me in the form of either contributions to my Patreon, which I'll put a link for up here, or they visit my shop and support me by purchasing some of the products I put together for other anglers that enjoy spotty fishing and halibut fishing. If you want to check out those designs and, and uh, the products I have available for you, go to shop.romancaster.com. And if you want to support me on Patreon, go to romancaster.com forward slash Patreon. That money, of course, gets used towards replacing equipment, uh, buying tackle, and just uh, being able to justify spending so much time making these videos and teaching you guys what I'm learning. So if you want to support, those would be some cool ways for you to do it. There's also a bunch of links in the description of this, of this video where you can see other ways to support the channel. If you want to become a better angler and catch more fish, consider subscribing. You can do so by clicking the round icon right here. I'm also going to put a playlist of all of my spotted bay bass fishing videos where you could get even more information for you to become a better angler. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the water. Woo! -hoo!